Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jesse Kublikan Hoff. We are here at Electro Fishing. Some professors at the University of Life Sciences here in Norway. Basically, we're using DC electricity to uh, incapacitate the fish for a couple minutes. Kind of get these fish, get the eggs out of them. So we're at a little stream outside of, uh, outside of Oslo. Oh, we got fish! Now so far. Whoa, it looks like a big one. Get him, Stian. That's a big one. That's a big guy, the biggest one yet. Wow! Wow! Yep, that might be bigger than the other one. Oh, that's a big one. Big male. Another male. Tell by his hook, right? We should keep right? that one for just having the sperm. <laughs> I want him into the experiment. Tell by his hook. Wow. And that's nice. that's the quality sign. That's what the females look for. Big this hair. Here ah. you that's, this, that's really the status symbol. This, this is what the females like. Yeah, big fin right there. What is that called? Is it the adipose fin? Ah. This is uh, the gear. Um, so we have Here's the battery, and that's the power source, and brings in the electricity into this uh, transducer, and transform into direct current, and goes via this an uh, anode. anode, and then we have this as a cathode, the tail hanging behind, and we create just an electric field. And once the fish get into the field, it gets attracted to this anode right here. And then we can catch them using a dipnet. So, and you said the range of the device. The, ra the range is about like three, four, five, even even five, even six meters. It depends on the conductivity. Wow. Yeah. And it'll render the the fish just totally. Yeah, it shocks the fish. Shocks the yeah, fish. Yeah. And how long are they going to be? Like, uh, they, that, incapacitated. Just a couple of seconds, or they can stay like that for a couple of minutes. Even it depends on how uh, heavily they shock they get. Yeah. So that varies a lot. It's more efficient for, for large fish than small fish, so it's like uh, easier to catch the big ones than the small ones. Huh. And it's all, also more harmful for the big ones than the, than the small ones. It's more harmful for the big ones? Yeah, they can actually contract the muscles so as hard as they actually break their own back, backbone. Huh. So it's, uh, yeah, you, sh you shouldn't chop them too much really. And then we're going to be taking the eggs out of the fish. Yeah, we'll strip them for, for, for gametes, for eggs and sperm, and make crossings in the lab, and raise them up till they start feeding, and then we'll just do some genetics on them. And the fish grows up here in the, in the creeks, spends like, I guess, well, they are very fast. Two, two, uh, two one, three one, years, maybe? One, one, one to year? two years. One to two years here. Yeah. Grow faster in this yeah, creek. Three, three, three. Yeah. And it goes back, then goes to the fjord, feeds there for about a year and comes or more and comes back to spawn here. And they can they can spawn multiple times. So spawning here? Yeah. See there here? Was, there was a spawning site. Been fish spawning here. I mean they, they kind of clear off the algae, they dig up yeah, all the, the rocks and sand fine. and so they just see like new material coming up like hmm. pale spots here. That's a spawning red. First got our first see fat that, mama female. Right, see that there too, like that funnel thing. The funnel right there? Yeah, that's yeah. the oviduct. Oviduct. Oh. That's the oviduct. I tried to catch uh, seven males and seven females today for, for doing the crossing. Sea trout it is. And that's sea trout, yeah. We just fish upstream to the stock in area and if we, for like three or four seconds, nothing happens, we just keep on moving. So we get fish. Okay. Hi. Oh. One of those great females. Yep, you got one. I could oh, see it. Lay in there. There you go. So one like of those taking candy uh, from a baby. No. Bag something. It's a probably a sneaker. He's ready to spawn. Oh. The sneakers, they just. They, they just sneak upon like the main the, the couple, big couple, the big couple, and they just sneak in and spawn together with them. They're just pretending to be juveniles, so they're not like a com in competition with the big males. It's extremely yeah, important to keep the, everything uh, dry. No water has the, to get into, the, into the sperm or into the eggs, because mm. that will start activating the eggs in the sperm, and then we can't 
fertilize them later on. Uh, this is a pit antenna setup. Um, we tie fish for internal tags, about this big, uh, put them into their bellies, and when the fish passes through that, those antennas, they get registered in a reader up there and stored in a logger. And uh, from that, we can read whether the fish is downstream or upstream from here. I'm looking forward to see whether we have different survival from fish growing upstream versus downstream from this antenna area. And there's some mm. bad stuff coming out of yeah, the pipe there? Exactly. So right over there, there is a pipeline coming out which empties um, polluted water from tunnel washing and mm -hmm. also from ru uh, runoff water from, from the main road. And we're studying the effects from that on, on the brown trout and salmon in the river. Oh, guys and gals, thanks for watching. Had a great time lecture fishing with uh, Professor Stian and Professor Chan. But yeah, definitely opened my eyes to the possibilities there, you know. You can really get a lot of fish with this electro fishing equipment. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel if you could. Like the video, comment on it, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, see you next time. It's an eel! Oh, it just got an eel. Look, he just poked that up right out of the, grabbed it out of the water with his hands like an animal. Wow, look at that eel. They're endangered. Yeah. Okay, eel, you go.